Shalom, Akiyam. First and foremost, I want to give all praise to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. I want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of the great, great millstone that rule well. And peace and salutation to your elect Akiyam, the house of David and the ancient Hebrews, pronounced by Yath Dawada, kicking his word in sincerity and truth. This is the brother Sha'ar from the Great Millstone Dallas camp, and um, the brother Mike Allen and myself are actually down here in Houston right now. Brought it out with them brothers, fellowshiped with them, but um, we had class yesterday, and there was a topic that I, you know, resonated with my spirit. We had went into, and um, just really just it was in my spirit to put this on wax as well, just because um, through the spirit I feel like it's something. Um, of course, you know, it's within the scripture, so it's something that we all need to hear. And uh, we also need to incorporate it more in our lives, you know, and of course, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm talking to myself, you know, because I can only attest for myself. But, um, you know, as the scriptures say, all things written for time were written for our learning, you know, and the more we the more we practice these, the more closer we'll get to being in the kingdom and being on the righteous, the righteous side. OK, you know, and being on that right hand. All right. But without further ado, um, I'm going to start. I'm going to start off um, in Sirach, chapter seven. And this is verse 15. Again, we're not supposed to hate laborious work we're not supposed to envy the stuff that we're doing we're supposed to pretty much give according to the portion that Yahabashim Yahabashah gave with us gave, gave gave to us okay whatever portion it is if you have a little give that little that you have if you have a higher portion of wisdom that's knowledge wisdom and understanding give that but that's going to come a more responsibility but at the end of the day we're all members of this body and we all have a job that we're supposed to do okay so um, this is uh, Sirach chapter 7, verse 15. And it says, Hate not labor's work, neither husbandry, which the Most High hath ordained. Okay, so this is labor's work that we're doing. Okay, this is what we're doing. We're pushing the word. We're, we're, we, we we're grabbing that, um, what is it called? That hoe, scraping the dirt, breaking the dirt down, planting those seeds, continually doing it, man. All right, we're not supposed to hate it. We're not supposed to feel away about it. We're not supposed to side when we get ready to go to camp you know we're supposed to do it because ultimately this is what seals our salvation when i say this is what seals it it's showing your our faith all right but we know what the scriptures say um, according to james chapter 2 you know having our faith without works is dead okay so this is part of that work that we're doing which shows our faith all right this is this is what the heavenly father is going to look at you know and not only just on the highways and byways but how we conduct ourselves being men of the lord because ultimately Meditating on this scripture, practicing what's in here and rehearsing these righteous acts is doing the work of the Heavenly Father. So that's what shows our faith is by the works that we're doing. And we're not supposed to hate that. All right. It says neither husbandry. And what is husbandry? All right. When you go into the word husband, it means to be a planter. All right. Like when um, when when a, when a man and woman get married, you know, the man becomes the husband and the woman becomes the wife. All right, because the husband plants the seed into the wife. All right. And fruit comes out from that. All right. So where that comes from, it actually derives from being a laborer. All right. Putting in that work, being a farmer. All right. Planting those seeds. That's where the actual word husband comes from. All right. And that's what we're doing when we're on the highways and byways when we're conducting ourselves as men. When the people see how we act, that's the laborer's work. That's the husbandry. All right. That's what we're part of. We're we're the husbandry of Yahweh Shem Yahweh because that seed represents the word, and that's what we're planting. We're putting it out there. We're bearing good tides. All right. So why would you hate that? Doing the work of the heavenly Father, He could have had us being any of these niggas that we see out here downtown bugged out, or or our people when you when you at family gatherings and you see how Jake's acting, or when you're out in public and and everybody's quiet and Jake is out rambling acting a damn fool for the whole the whole place you're at to see all right would you rather be like that or would you rather be doing the work of the heavenly father okay you don't hate you when you was a nigga you didn't hate being a nigga you didn't hate having to do what niggas did since you didn't hate smoking weed all right you didn't hate looking at a woman that was in a relationship so if you didn't hate that stuff in the world, why in the world would we want to hate the, the laborers work that we're doing on the righteous sin of Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai? Okay, and when I say hate, you might not blatantly say you hate it, but your actions towards it will show forth. Not going to camp as much, not being a brother as much, you know? And again, you know, it's certain stuff. What us being in the flesh, those demons will mess with us. So if, we do have those thoughts. That's something that we have to pray off, man. 
You know, we're, hey, we in the flesh. You might just be in real, you might have had those thoughts of, you know, man, I got to go to camp. You know what I'm saying? Not that it's, if it's a bad thing, but if it's, man, I just feel like chilling just a little longer. You know, that demon will fuck with you, man. It can even be on that note. And it, it's happened to Jake, you know. But we supposed to go out there and show forth our faith through our works, you know. And we got to grow, you know. And again, when, when we do these lessons, man, a lot of times we talking to ourselves as well, you know. But um, continuing on, it says, hate not labor's work, neither husbandry, which the most high hath ordained. This is what he ordained ultimately. This was already written before time was created, before this existence as we see this reality was created. It was already written. So to be one of those men that the Heavenly Father had wrote about to do his work, that's a beautiful thing, man. All right. Got another scripture I'm going to bring out. All right. And this is the book of Tobit, chapter four. And I'm going to start at verse six. It says, for if thou deal truly, thy doings shall prosperously succeed to thee. Hold on. Matter of fact, I'm going to slack. I'm going to start at verse five. Just so we'll, so we'll have more understanding on verse six, seven and so forth. OK, so this is Tobit, chapter four, verse five. My son, be mindful of Yahweh, our power all thy days. And let not thy will be set to sin or to transgress his commandments. OK, so our will isn't supposed to be set for us to sin because we're living in the flesh. We're living in the world. A lot of these who we see around us is their will is set to sin. They automatically have in their minds prepared to go off. And they don't even realize it because their lives, they sin daily. They don't have the word. So he says. Be mindful of Yahweh, our power all thy days and let not thy will be set to sin. OK, because our will is supposed to be set towards righteousness. Towards doing the will of Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. All right. It says or to transgress his commandments. And that's what it is, what, what it means to sin, because the word sin goes to the words transgressing of the law. All right. It says do uprightly all thy life long and follow not the ways of righteousness of Salak and follow not the ways of unrighteousness Salak it all right so it says do uprightly because ultimately the elect is going to do uprightly all right uh, so there's a, 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 na a name of one of our forefathers and it means upright Enoch you know and even when you go to Isaiah the 44th chapter it talks about the men that's going to spring up as as willows all right as the grass and they're going to call their name of the name of Jeshurun, of, of Israel, okay? And when you go into that word Jeshurun, when you go into it in Isaiah 44, and Salaki wasn't verbatim, but that word means to be upright, all right? So that's how we're supposed to conduct ourselves, being of the hopeful elect, is to do uprightly, okay? So it says, do uprightly all thy life long, and follow not the ways of unrighteousness. For if thou deal truly, thy doings shall prosperously succeed to thee. All right. And doing truly is being a man of the heavenly father, conducting yourselves. All right. Because he, even if you when you read in Joshua, the first chapter, when he's talking to the congregation, he says to be valiant and have good courage and you shall succeed. All right. When you meditate on this word. All right. And to all them that live justly. And this is the key point. Give alms of thy substance. What is thy substance? OK, thy substance is what you have. Your goods, whether it be cattle, whether it be lamb, you know, or right now, this day and age, the money that we have, it says, give alms to thy substance. Now, this could go twofold. All right. Because, again, as we read in Sirach, the seventh chapter, it said, hate not labor's work, neither husbandry with the most high hath ordained. OK, and when even when you're a farmer, so you have substance. But in this sense, the substance retains to the knowledge of these scriptures. What you have, the portion that was given to you, like your substance is a portion of your land or a portion of your cattle back then. But this is our substance right now. OK, and we're not supposed to hate giving out laborious work because we're supposed to give alms of our substance. All right. And when thou givest alms, let not thine eye be envious, 
neither turn thy face from any poor, and the face of the Most High shall not be turned away from thee. And who's the poor? The elect. Okay? You're not supposed to turn your face from that. You don't know who could be of the elect. So why would you want to hate doing the work? You know, there's really I don't want to, I don't want to put it like that because a, a sincere man is going to hate doing the work. That's how it is. But those demons can mess with you sometimes. All right. So that's something to pray off, you know, because this is our job to give to give according to our substance. Now, of course, we know this is part of the law where you actually had, you know, had to had to give a portion, you know, 10 percent. And that's a beautiful thing. And that just shows you how beautiful our nation really is when they're actually set on that standard. All right. When we were closer to the Heavenly Father, this is this was a law. They don't have that over there in America, man. You see these bums out here on the streets? No, man. When we seen somebody in the lower condition, we were supposed to give a portion of what we had. It was ultimately set up for everybody to succeed in the kingdom of Israel, man. All right. But, you know. The reason why I'm bringing out this scripture, because that's something that I thought about, that substance pertaining to the portion that the Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah gave us, all right? And when thou give us alms, let not thine eye be envious, neither turn thy face from the poor. Again, you don't know who's out there, man. You don't know what member of the elect is out there, you know? So don't hold back or don't put that candle under a bushel, all right? We supposed to be lighthouses, man. We supposed to be that light set on top of a hill. And the face of the Most High shall not be turned away from thee, all right? If thou hast abundance, gives alms accordingly. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to that little. Because you remember the, the poor widow that gave her last farthing. All right. And that poor widow represents the elect, man. So if you have a little, don't be afraid to give that because the scriptures say you'll receive tenfold. All right. And that's why he puts the, the little so highly over the multitude. That's why he puts the remnant so high under everybody else. That little bit that you have shows forth your more your, your, your faith once you put that little bit that you have towards it. All right. Somebody that has it all can give what they have. And of course, it's appreciative, you know, but is it held as the same standard of that person that didn't have so like you, that didn't have too much of nothing that gave it. All right. And it says again, Salaki, I like to read scriptures back to back just to get back on the topic and go get back on, you know, reading. If thou hast abundance, give alms accordingly. If thou have but a little, be not afraid to give according to the little. For thou layest up a good treasure for thyself against the day of necessity. All right. So we're, we're laying up our treasures within this work that we're doing. We're building a spiritual bank account. We're investing spiritual stock. Because Yahweh Hashem Yahweh Shai invested in us, all right, and that investment was was with His blood, all right. He invested in us, so He's expecting us to give to produce twofold to flip it, okay. This is um, this is Matthew chapter twenty-five verse fourteen. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Who called his own who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. So that that man traveling into a far country is Yahweh. And those servants is his elect. The men that he had chosen. Reading the scripture is talking about the twelve apostles, but that had that, that, that multiplied to what you see forth today. Okay? So were those were those servants that he had called to deliver unto them or the sheep his goods? OK, verse 15 says and unto one, he gave five talents and unto two of Salaki to another Salaki and unto one. He gave five talents to another two and to another one to every man, according to his several ability and straightway took his journey. OK, so this is three individuals we're talking about. All right. Just within this parable, one received five talents, one received two and another one. OK. And it says he gave it according to his several ability. And that goes to the different gifts that Yahabashim Yahabashah gave us. Some of our gifts might not so forth as we might consider being great as great as another brother's gift. OK. But at the end of the day, it's still a gift that the Heavenly Father gave us. And he wants to utilize that gift that we have. And he wants us to put it out there and receive that fruit back, receive those goods back. All right. What he gave us, we're supposed to we're supposed to reap more. 
Okay? So when you go into Matthew 25 and 15, it says, And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, and to every man according to his several ability, and the straightway took his journey. Whether it be you be a prophet, whether you be a help, whether you be a, um, whether, what, what was I going to say? You like mighty in the understanding the scriptures or mighty in remembering scriptures or whether you might be a man of counsel. Whatever it is, you need to use that and utilize whatever it is. It goes for myself. It goes for all of us. I'm talking to myself, of course, too. Verse 16 says, then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same and made them other five talents. So what that man did, well, he flipped it. And with him showing forth his faith by doing the works, the Lord had gave him another five, okay? And likewise, he that had received two, he also gained other two, all right? So he put forth his talents and received back twofold. And this can even go toward the greatness that we're gonna have in the kingdom, man, all right? But he that had received one went and digged it in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. All right. And this is symbolic to when our Lord comes back from that far country, you know, the kingdom. Yahweh is coming back. All right. And those men that he had gave those talents to, he wants to see what they reproduced, what they've done with it. All right. That's why it says in Luke chapter 12, uh, blesses that man that shall be so doing when I come. And that's loosely paraphrasing. All right. But he that had received one went and digged it in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so, and I want to go with this word reckoneth and see what this word means. Okay. That word there is scenario. Um, scenario. I'm going to, hold on. Strong's G, 4868. Scenario. Scenario. And it, it sounds like it's scenario, but who knows, you know. But it says to take up together with another, uh, so like it, to take up together with other or others, to bring together with others, to cast up or settle accounts. Woo! To cast up or settle accounts. <laughs> because again, it's like we're investing in stock and we're dealing with stock and accounts and all of that. That's what the Heavenly Father's dealing with. What he had put in our account and what he have done. All right. So he's going to come back and reckon with us or settle accounts with us. OK, to make a reckoning with. All right. So what stood out was to settle accounts. OK, so in verse 20, it says, and so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliverest up unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained Beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou faithful and good, faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And that's the kingdom. The riches of the kingdom, the portion that the Lord gave us and what we've done with it, and the, the portion that we're going to receive in the kingdom. All right? Verse 22. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. All right. So <laughs> the, he had gained he had gained two others and he's going to be blessed for that. All right. His Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. And it's funny because one received five talents, one received two talents, but they are still made ruler over many things in the kingdom. And it doesn't give a number to the many things that they're going to be over in the kingdom. Over many things, man. All right. Verse 24 says, um, hold on, let me see here. Yeah, verse 24. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord. I knew thee that thou art a hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathered where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid my talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. <laughs> now that is, for example, is um is, is an excuse maker, you know. In what meaning? With the talent that the Lord gave him, he sat on it. 
He hid it under a bushel. He didn't do anything and he made the excuse saying, oh man, just so I'd have it when he came back. He didn't do nothing with it. He was only worried about himself. He wasn't worried about flipping and, 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 and preaching the gospel. You know, he was more worried about himself and trying so hard to retain that knowledge and just sit on it. Not try to bear good tidings. When you go into Psalm 68 and 11, it says, matter of fact, I'm, I'm going to go back to this verse. But really quick, I'm going to go to Psalm 68 and 11. Just so I can read it and just so I don't just, you know. Psalm 68 and 11 says, the Lord gave the word. Great was the company of those that published it. All right. And the reason why I wanted to go to that, because these were men that didn't dig that talent in the earth and were worried about what the Lord would say when he came back and forgetting it. No, man. The reason why they're great, because they're going to receive rulership in the kingdom. All right. They're going to be looked at amongst everybody else. Like these were the men that Yahweh chose that kicked the word. These were the men that set up the standard. All right. These were the men that that planted that seed and the fruit was grown from that. That's how the men of the Lord are going to be looked at in the kingdom. They're going to be have rulership righteously. OK, so it says great. And that word in, in um, the in the Hebrew is Rahab. OK, and it says much, many, great, much, many abounding in more numerous than abundant enough, great, strong, greater than. OK, so that's abundant, man. Great. Many. That's why when you read it again, let me go back to it in Matthew chapter 25. And I'm going to go back down to verse. 23, it says, his Lord said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant that has been faithful over a few things. I will make the ruler over many things. Those men are great, man. That hate not doing laborers work. That do this work, man. That's how Yahabashim Yahweh looks at his men that are sincere. All right. That's why he says, enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He did that gladly. It wasn't no, it wasn't no holding back when he said that, man. That's a reward, man. All right. So going back to this nigga that made the excuse in the 24th verse, then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth, and lo, there thou hast been that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, you lazy ass nigga. Thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers. Man, you were supposed to flip what I gave you, man. I made an investment in you. In you. I bought you with a price, bro. What you do with it, man? And then at thy my coming, I should receive mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him and give it unto him which had ten talents. All right. So not doing that work, man, the Lord will give it to somebody else and you'll be a bug out. Through. You see the example of men like that, man. All right, holding back, holding back the knowledge and wisdom and understanding from Yahweh Shem Yahweh Shah that was given to our apostles. And you don't want to preach it because you're so far on your own agenda. The Lord took that from you and giving it to other brothers that's hungry, man. This ain't about excuses, man. It's about doing the work. All right. For unto everyone that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away. Even that which he hath and cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness, man, that spirit leaving you, that light being gone, it's going to be utter darkness, man. That's a scary thing. All right. Being an unprofitable servant for the Lord bugging you out, man, this, this beautiful gift he had gave us and just taking it away just because you ain't want to do nothing with it. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth, you know. And that stands out, man. Once you, once you realize that, man, that your house shy ain't going, he ain't going to choose you for some stuff like that, man. You're going to be crying through. When you see that fire coming, them nukes coming, martial law hidden, you're going to wish you had done that, man. 
when the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. All right. And I'm really going to end it off on that one. But, you know, that's why it's important to not hate laborers work, because when you have that feeling of not doing the work or man being lazy, you know, that stuff will that stuff will carry on to next week into the week after that and to the point where you ain't doing nothing to flip this investment that the Lord put in us, man. That's why it's important, even if you do have that feeling to pray, because, again, we in the flesh. All right. Satan's definitely trying to mess with us, man. But to know that you own that you own the Lord's side, that he put something in you, man, shoot, that's something we need to we can consider. All right. Let's keep on doing this work. It goes for all of us, man. You know, Lord willing, this was edifying. Again, um, you know, we um, we down here in Houston and the brother Abadia, you know, he had brought those points out. And it was just something that really just inspired me to do this lesson on it, man. You know, just wanted to put it on wax. But again, Lord willing, it was edifying. Again, want to give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Want to give double honors to our apostles and our elders of great millstone that rule well. And peace and blessing to the elect, the house of David, the Bayath, Davidah, kicking his word of sincerity and truth. Shalom.